In this video, I plan to teach you how to find the x-intercepts of a polynomial function. This is actually pretty easy. Your objective will be to set y equal to 0 and then solve for x. In some cases, the polynomial will already be factored out, but in other cases, you'll have to factor and or use the quadratic formula to figure out what the x-intercepts are. So let's go to number 1. The first observation I make in number one is that it is in factored form, which is actually the easiest case of all. So I'm going to start by going ahead and setting y equal to zero. Okay, now that I've set y equal to zero, I'm going to take each independent factor and set it equal to zero. So I start with x squared equals zero. I'll now take the square root of each side, and I get my first x-intercept, which is at x equals zero. My second x-intercept can be found by taking the second factor and setting it equal to zero. So x plus one to the fourth equals zero. I'll now take the fourth root of each side, leaving me with x plus one equals zero. And I'll isolate x, getting me x equals negative one. So my second x-intercept is x equals negative one. The third x-intercept will be found by taking the third factor and setting it equal to zero. This will be 2x minus 5 to the third equals 0. Taking the cube root of each side, I'm left with 2x minus 5 equals 0. Adding 5 to both sides, I'm left with 2x equals 5. And dividing by 2, ultimately, I'm left with x equals 5 halves. So my third x-intercept is x equals 5 halves. My fourth and final x-intercept is found by taking the fourth factor and setting it equal to 0. So 4 minus x equals 0. Adding x to both sides, I get 4 equals x. Or if you prefer, x equals 4. And my fourth and final x-intercept is x equals 4. OK, so that was actually pretty easy. It was The polynomial was already factored, and I just set each factor equal to 0. Let's do the same thing again in number 2. The polynomial is not quite factored this time, and it's not quite expanded. It's somewhere in between. So this will be kind of interesting. Uh, I'll start by setting y equal to 0. Now that I've set y equal to 0, I just go down the line from left to right. And the first thing I notice is this negative 3. Well, there's really nothing to solve for in setting negative 3 equal to 0. In fact, if you wanted to, you can think of dividing both sides of the equation by negative 3, and it's basically going to go away. So this negative 3 has no impact. OK. Now I'm going to go to the next factor, which is x squared plus 4, and I'm going to set it equal to 0. Well, if x squared plus 4 equals 0, then x squared equals negative 4. And when I take the square root of this, I end up getting plus or minus 2i. And plus or minus 2i are not real graphable roots. So this also will not have an impact on my x-intercepts. So this has not had any contribution to my overall list of x-intercepts. So once again, no x-intercepts for that factor. OK, now I'm going to move to the third factor, which is x squared minus 4. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to come over to the side a little bit. And I'm going to set it equal to 0, getting me x squared minus 4 equals 0. Isolating x squared, or adding 4 to both sides, I get x squared equals 4. And taking the square root of both sides and not forgetting plus or minus, I get x equals plus or minus 2. So these are my first two x-intercepts. x equals 2, x equals minus 2. OK, and now for the fourth and final factor, which is x squared minus 3. And I'll set x squared minus 3 equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides. Square root both sides, not forgetting plus or minus. I get two additional x-intercepts, and they are plus root 3 and minus root 3. So in total, this particular problem in example 2 had four x-intercepts. 2, 0, negative 2, 0, positive root 3, 0, and negative root 3, 0. Skipping to example 3, this particular polynomial is not factored. So it's a little bit more challenging to find the x-intercepts. What I do notice, though, is that I can take a 2 out of each term. So I'm going to go ahead and set y equal to 0, and I'm also going to take a 2 out. So I'm going to do two things at once. I hope that's not confusing. 
Okay, so I've taken the two out, and similar to example two where there was a negative three out in front, that two is really not gonna have any impact. Again, if you want, you can think of dividing both sides right now by two, and it's just gonna go away. Now the question is, with what's resulting here, this trinomial, can I factor that, which would be quick, or do I need the quadratic formula? And doing a quick analysis, I see that I can factor that. So this is gonna factor to x plus five and x minus one. Now that I've factored the polynomial completely, I'll set each factor equal to zero. Starting with two, I again have no impact with that two. Setting x plus five equals to zero, subtracting five, I get x equals negative five. And for the, th the second factor, or the third factor, if you want to include that two or not, I'm gonna set x minus one equal to zero. I end up with x equals one. So if you are able to factor the polynomial, it's really the quickest and easiest way to break it down and then set each of those factors equal to zero. So in example three, there were two x-intercepts, negative five, zero, and one, zero. Let's move to the last example, example four. As I scan through the polynomial in example four, I notice that there's nothing that I could take out. Also, after a quick analysis, I realize that I can't factor this either the factors of one are not gonna to subtract to a negative two. So I'm forced in this case to do the quadratic formula. So I'm gonna go off to the side and make a cubby, defining clearly what a, b, and c are. a is one, that's the coefficient of x squared. b is negative two, the coefficient of x. And c is negative one, the constant at the end. I'm now gonna use the quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Substituting in the values from the cubby and cleaning up, we end up with 2 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. Well, I can break down the square root of 8 and think of that in simplified form as 2 root 2. In my class, I have a special rule when I have many things divided by one thing. I call this the Moo Rule, M-O-O, -O, like the sound a cow makes, and that's an acronym for many over one. So I have two things on the top and one thing on the bottom. And when that happens, I could split this up into two separate fractions, two over two, plus or minus, two root two over two. And then I can simplify each of those fractions. So two over two is one. Two root two over two, the twos cancel out and I'm left with just root two. So the two x-intercepts here are one plus root two comma zero and one minus root two comma zero. So that's how you find x-intercepts of polynomials. You simply let y equal to zero, you factor if you need to, and then you set each factor equal to zero. It's that simple.